well guys I wasn't planning on making this video but I was watching back going back to watch some of full killers videos and uh, well I saw some of the problems with TNA impact in the last couple of years and some of the overbooking and oh god it was awful even after the Vince Russo era ended oh god this is probably going to be a 20 minute video at least because there's so much crap that I want to talk about and I'm going to go back three years okay I'm going to go back all the way to 2010 and work my way up okay to, I'm going to start with the Hogan Bischoff regime and work my way up to 2013 this is probably going to be a long video I'm going to warn you of that right now I'm going to try and sum this up. I'm going to go through every last detail I can think of. And I'm going to stay on this screen because I need to keep an eye on the recording. I know I can go an hour, but I am not going an hour because I don't think I'll be able to upload an hour long video at this point. Okay. TNA. They brought in Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan in 2010. Okay, then they brought in Flair, they bring in Hogan, they brought in Bishop, they brought in Jeff Hardy, they brought in Shannon Moore, and blah blah blah. They even brought in Orlando Jordan, which brings me to my first point. Why the hell do you bring in Orlando freaking Jordan? He's never been over in his whole career. He's gay for crying out loud. I don't have a problem with gay guys, I'm going to say that right now. I have no problem with people being gay, but just don't do it in the wrestling business for crying out loud. Oh, God almighty. They had an angle with Jordan in a free some angle, in a freeway game, in a freeway gangbang angle, if you want to call it that, with Eric Young and someone else. Oh. This is one of those moments where it's like, what the hell is Hogan on? Another one is, I think this is really bad. They hire Hall Nash and Walkman. What the hell? They're out of their prime. They're not in their prime. They're old men. They're druggies. And, I, and that goes especially for Scott Hall and Kevin Nash and Scott, and Sean Waltman. Much as I love X-Pac and DX and the NWO, he's a drunkie. He's a druggie. I'm sorry. And then, you, what makes this even worse, and Folk Hero brought this up in his video, you make them the World Tag Team Champions. What the hell were you thinking, TNA? And then, you turn Jeff Hardy heel, you combine the model with Fortune, into this overbooked, overdone clusterfuck called Immortal, which went on for almost a year and a half. You buried everyone on the roster, and I'm starting to get into 2011. <sighs> I know I didn't go for everything, but... Okay, wait, before I get to Immortal, let me go through Bound for Glory, because that was where I really started to hate TNA. Oh, God. You had Orlando joining Eric Young in a match against Ink Ink, which, by the way, Ink Ink? What kind of name for a tag team is that? Ugh. And he looked like, uh, I think the wrestling guru said it best. Jordan did that when he came out. He looked like Lady Gaga. And, oh, God. Do I even have to bring up the fact that Orlando Jordan and, and Eric Young licked each other? Oh, God. And I'm going to put this right on my channel. So everyone could see it. This is going to be a really response to Full Killer. In all his TNA videos, okay? Oh, God. And Bill and Doug, but mostly Full Kill because he's awesome. 
but let me say this right now. These are some of the stuff I've gone over so far. I'm beginning to think I need to introduce a overbooking alarm into these videos. I swear to God. Folk Killer has a gimmick overload. I'm beginning to think I need a gimmick overload just like him because there's so many damn gimmicks on these damn pay-per-views. I swear to God. That's why I don't watch TNA for the most part because they give gimmicks away for free. Oh, dear God. Recently, they give away a ladder match for free on TV, on Impact. Why should I care? You gave away an Ultimate X match on free TV in 2010. When you signed the Young Bucks, which is one of the best tag teams on the Indies, you turned them into Generation Me, which is the worst name of a tag team other than Ink Ink. You have them have one match with machine guns, and then you have an Ultimate X, which is really bad. You should have saved it for Bound for Glory. Oh, and for TNA fanboys, if you watch this, I'm going to be ripping TNA apart, so you may not want to watch this. Just saying. Okay. Bound for Glory. Oh, God. I'll get today in a minute. Because I am going to rip that apart. Most of it was good. But. Where, where do I begin? Most of it was okay. But the fact you had Samoa Joe. Job. You had Samoa Joe and the Pope. Lose. Having the team with has been like. Oh my god, how can I say this and not come out as, off as an asshole? You had some Moa Joe job to Kevin Nash. Okay, let me get this straight. Some Moa Joe, a former Ring of Honor and TNA champion. A man who is over, more over than anyone. Maybe other than Kurt Angle or maybe Sting, which I'll get to Sting in a minute. But, you job him out to a man who's in his 50s, who is leaving the company, a man who has not been in his prime since the 1990s. Oh my god. He, oh. Next, for the love of god, let's move on before I really lose my temper. Next, you had Rob Van Dam in the Abyss. Really good match, I'm not gonna lie, that was a good match. I've never seen it, but I hear it's really good. Bish even took a shot from Janice, which I was like, wow. And the main event. Angle, Anderson, Slash Kennedy, Slash Kennedy, whatever. And Hardy. Hardy turned heel. And now we get today. Oh, God. It was Jarrett, Abyss, Hardy, Bischoff, Immortal. It was just a clustered mess, and the fact that Immortal joined, oh my god, it was horrible. And the fact that that got as much time as it did, almost every week that I. I think Full Kill has said it best. The fact that almost every week on this damn damn show that they had an immortal promo to shut the show is ridiculous. And the fact that, well, I don't want to cover that yet. Okay, then we get to the Bound for Glory series, the Bottle. Okay. You push Robert Roode, or Bobby Roode, back then, anyway, you push him, and you have all these video packages on him, and then, oh, but before I get to that, let me talk about this whole Sting, Joker Sting gimmick. Oh my god.
you have Sting, who is, who should never have been brought into TNA, back to TNA in the first place. You have, you have Sting playing the Joker gimmick. You have him act like the Joker. And then, you have him face Ric Flair, who should never have come to TNA. And then you have him fight Hogan and Balfour Groy in one of your main events? This is not the 90s, this is 2011 back then, and this was back in 2011. Oh my god. I wouldn't have been surprised if one of the brothers had no suit TNA at this point for copyright infringement. Seriously. Oh my god. And then, Bobby Roode job. In 13 minutes to Kurt Angle, who was injured, because Hogan decided that Bobby Roode wasn't ready for the title, and they screwed Bobby out of the belt just to have James Storm win it the, the following week on Impact. What the hell was with you, Hogan? Oh my god. And then, not and during the Hogan thing match, if you even want to call it a match, they had this stupid angle where they introduced Bischoff's so-called son as the referee, and they're still pushing up this guy. Now he's in the ancient age, which I'll get to that in a minute. And now, last year, this new faction, ACNH, which has been taking out people left and right. It was a good idea in the beginning. Which, by the way, before I go any further, Vince Russo is no longer in charge of creative. Thank you, Lord. Vince Russo is overrated. He needs to be fired and never rest be in a wrestling company ever again. I hope this man never hires him back. God, he took credit for the attitude error. I, I'll get the attitude error at another time. Right now, <sighs> then they changed it into Impact Wrestling, which I liked. But then they started adding more and more people to the Aces and Eights. Oh, dear God. The first guy revealed was D Bond, then they was Bully Ray, then Taz, which. Boardproof Taz? What the hell does that mean? I said this is probably gonna be a 20 minute video, but. Oh, the last guys I know that joined H and H was Wiz Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff. That's all I know. But I do know Bully Ray lost the title. So of all people, Alex Shelley, not Alex Shelley, well, Christopher Saban, Chris Saban, of all people, it's probably going to be a short title reign, maybe he'll ask for Bound for Glory, I don't know, I went through a lot in this video, and I hope folks here will understand, why? This is the kind of stuff I do not want in pro wrestling. That's why I want to watch Ring of Honor. WWE is just as bad. I'm going to do a separate rant on WWE one of these days. But this has been my TNA Impact Wrestling rant. See you guys later.